Welcome to the Mind Basketball Podcast, aka the MOB Podcast. I am Evan. And I'm Ja. And this is our basketball podcast where we recap, break down, analyze players and teams from the previous games from the previous day. It is the day after Christmas. How are you, Ja? How was your Christmas? I don't even know how to even describe it. Nothing good. <laughs> well, 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 I'm not gonna say nothing good. It was calm. It was calm. It was calm. It was chill. I say that. It was nothing bad. That's good. That's good. That's what you can ask for in a good day. Yeah. Yeah. I had a good Christmas as well. A calm, chill Christmas. Hope everyone had a calm, chill Christmas or just an enjoyable Christmas, whether with family or not. Uh, there was a lot of basketball games going on. Uh, whether they were interesting or not is another topic. <laughs> but basketball games nonetheless. And... That is what we special specialize in. So we're going to talk about it. So let's get right into it. First, we talk about the Nets and the Celtics game in which it was a very, very close game up until part midway to the third quarter where Katie and Kyrie just took off and took over and the Nets just ran with it from, the, from that point on. And they finished the game 138 to 90. 95 or oh, 123 to 95. So let me get your thoughts, Ja, first about this game. Yeah. Um, compared to all the games that happened happened Christmas Day, um, mm-hmm. this was the most interesting game. Like, you know, it was like more about in the in the in the first half in that beginning start of the third quarter, it was more about exchanging buckets on both sides of the floor. Um, teams getting their rhythm and getting their flow, and then the moment, the moment with the third quarter. Well, let me not say this because one of them was already hot in the first half and was taking that momentum into the into the second half. But the moment that that third quarter hit in the second in, in the in the half part of the third quarter hit, it was mm-hmm. all KD and Kyrie. Though, like you know, yeah. they 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 do this on a constant. I told you the Nets are coming quick and they coming fast, and those two are the whole catalyst. They. They, they know how to find their spots. Again, these are two of the most skilled, most just pure scores. They're just pure scores all around. Like, you know what I mean? They know how to they know how to read defenses. They know how to pick spots, pick angles, get to their spots, and they know how to create. They know how to cook and create. And you've seen that throughout that whole quarter. Um, KD, Kyrie had it going since the since the beginning. Like, you know, he he was getting to his spot, he was making threes, he was making deep threes, he was getting to the paint. He was hitting his shots within. He was hitting fadeaways. Like, he was just doing all of those. But KD struggled in the beginning because of, of course, of foul trouble and everything. But the moment that third quarter hit for him, he looked like the regular KD as we were used to seeing. So, Yep. Yeah, I mean, KD and Kyrie making plays. Like they were doing their whole career, whether they've been – whether they were scoring in the third quarter or just making the right play, making the right pass. They was just on fire, and the Nets took that, and they took what they had with them, and they just kept going, and they didn't stop. And the Celtics couldn't keep up with them. They couldn't make their shots, and when you can't make your shots against a loaded Kyrie, Kyrie, Kyrie-led Nets team, offensive heavy, Steve Nash, head coach, Mike D'Antoni, assistant coach, and Karis LeVert coming off the bench, like, you, you're not going to have any chance exactly. competing against them, you know. I mean, Tatum, he had a good, he had a good first half and he had a good first part of the third quarter. You know, you saw that um little step back, turn around three on Kyrie's face. Yeah. And he slapped him on his ass. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you still got to finish the game, young fella. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jalen Brown had a good game as well, but it's just about, it's more about they just couldn't keep up with what the Nets had. And how yeah. how really can you keep up with Katie and Kyrie? Mm-hmm. You you I, to be honest, you you can't. These guys have they're as polished as they probably were before. They their maturity hits in, and when maturity hits in, it's kind of hard to go against guys who are that skilled offensively. Who games have matured to a point where it feels like they are masters at what they do. They mm-hmm. are really masters at what they do, and you just can't stop it. And to add along the fact again. You have a loaded team with Karis LeVert, a Joe Harris, a Spencer Dinwiddie, who struggled a little bit too. But just all those guys there who have, who also have the ability to 
to, to score in different ways. It's just like you can't you got you got to learn how to maintain that no matter if you're a two way team also who has the right defense to try to stop it. I mean, yeah, uh, and Celtics, if they meet the Nets, well, first they they're gonna need Kemba back. Yeah, you know, I feel like Kemba was, them missing Kemba in this game really hurted them. Is Kemba is an elite scorer? He's been an elite scorer his entire career. Great ball handler, a great um penetrator, and going in the paint. So he they really could have used you know his twenty <laughs> that he would have given him tonight or last night. But the thing is. It's gonna be a long road for them because he's out indefinitely, though. So, yeah, but I think they're gonna be fine without him. I think for now, for now, I think they're gonna need him come playoff time, yeah, or whatever. But for now, they're gonna be fine and they get they're still gonna be in that you know the playoffs. Yeah. And when he comes two, back, they gotta ascend. This is only two or 72 games for them, so yeah, but this is a great win by the Nets. Great dominant display by KD and Kyrie, proven to them, proven to the league again why they're dangerous and why the Nets be, you know, mm-hmm. you have to look out for them. They took they took the Bucks over them making it to the finals. It's embarrassing. Who is they? A whole bunch of people had the Nets going to the finals. No, I'm talking about like how they had the Bucks going. Oh, in general. Yeah, like I like again. Don't forget what TNT said. The the like what the whole crew from TNT said. It was like it was just it was just a bad look. Well, one we'll calm down for it's only been two games. <laughs> we have to we have to we have to wait and see how they will play. How you know how their chemistry and all that flows into the future when they lose games and all that, and when they're in you know dark places and stuff like that. But for now they they're playing great. They just beat two well, one great team. We'll talk about the other team later on that they beat. Um, but yeah, this was a this was a good one. You know, Sage was burning all over the court. Kyrie dropping 37. Yo, yo, he's calling you a pawn every time you say that, bro. It's awesome. <laughs> he's calling you a pawn every time. Just chill. Just chill. But yeah, I, I, like I said, like I said, the Nets proving their dominance and making a statement with this win against one of the conferences elite. Mm-hmm. All right. So the next game we're gonna talk about is the last game that happened last night in a rematch of the East, the Western Conference semifinals between the Clippers and the Nuggets. So this was a, this was kind of a runaway for the Clippers at first, but then towards the end of the third quarter and the fourth quarter, the Nuggets started to come back, started to chip away, but then the, the Clippers made their shots and was able to maintain their lead and they won 121. To 108. Your thoughts, but first, before your thoughts, Ky- um, Kawhi did get hurt, got elbowed right in his jaw by Ibaka, his own man. Um, I hope he's okay. As we're recording this podcast, we don't know any update about him. But it shouldn't be that serious for him to be out, you know, for a long period of time. I don't think this is a severe injury in which is going to be, like, breathtaking. It was kind of crazy what happened. I didn't even realize bleeding from his mouth. Yeah, a but lot. I, I, I didn't. I didn't realize that he even got hurt. Did, wait, did you even see it before? Before they like stopped the whole. Oh uh, yeah, but no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Like I really didn't see. I didn't even know he was down. I just know that I thought something happened with Jamal Murray and Pat Bev when he did the foul. Um, with that situation happening, so that's why I thought. But when I seen it happen, I was just like, I didn't really know what to say. I, I was kind of in shock. Yeah, way. I had no idea what happened. I thought that was Nate Robinson. But um, get you, let me get your thoughts. Let <laughs> me get your thoughts on the Nuggets and Clippers game. Um, well, again, this is this is the second game of seventy two games for them. But again, this new system is going well for this team. Yeah. Oh, they just look like they're in rhythm, like they all on the same kind of page in terms of focus and connection, and you know, like you know. Even though the three ball is a um they they that they love to use the three ball, it's like now they're using more of like you know the mid range area in a way. Like they're picking their spots from there and they're taking advantage of using that and then spreading out to the three or using that as an advantage to attack the rim. And you can see that. And Paul George, Paul George was looking good, man. He was looking real good. Things that we love to see him do, just things that we love to see him do that we see on a nightly basis from him. Before that whole pay off, 
playoff situation that happened last season. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he just look, he just, he just looks more in rhythm. In rhythm, like like what we're accustomed to seeing to, to like what we used to be accustomed to seeing to him prior to last season. Like, you know, he just looks more like he could be himself more again. Which is what you like to see, and the whole Clippers team was just cl- um was just clicking on all cylinders. Yeah, like as you just touched on up upon, like they weren't trying to force threes, like sometimes them or basically almost every team in the league does nowadays, trying to force threes because that's the norm and that's how you can win games in the in this um league now. But they took the mid range, like Paul George. I think Rich Jefferson even said it, yeah. like he. You seeing him instead of him forcing himself to shoot a three, he's going inside. He's a mismatch for almost anyone who guards him. So yeah. take up on that mismatch. Go in the paint, go in the mid range, post up. Every time you shoot, you gotta you have about a few inches over the guy. Yeah. So just do that, and then go to the three as you said. You know, go inside, then go out. Um, as for the Nuggets, I want to talk about Murray because he did. Have a good second half, strong second half, and he was hitting his shots and bringing them back into the game. But for the Nuggets to be successful and for the Nuggets to win, they need him to start off strong. Exactly. They need him to start off strong. And no question, they do. And again, this is what I always say. And I think that's what we constantly saw from him in general. He has this ability to, like, you know, be slow starting off, mm-hmm. pick it up last minute. But it's just like, in games like these, especially when you're going against like an elite powerhouse like the Clippers, you can't do that. Especially if you go against the, and let me not say, but let's say if they go against them in the playoffs again, you just can't do that. Because now, look, the way that they're playing, you just can't do things like that. You know what I mean? You have to learn how to start off a game strong. I understand if you need to get a rhythm. Every talented elite score needs to get a rhythm. But now, when you get that rhythm, you got to keep that rhythm. So of course you can't know when you're gonna miss or make shots. It just be like that, right? Even though when you feel it, you could miss it. But I'm just saying, he needs to know that when it's time for him to come up big, it's time for him to come up big, especially when your team was down by that much. Yeah, and you notice when he starts off slow, the Nuggets start off slow. Exactly, because he's a centerpiece of that team. He wants to be a star player. Oh, we see that superstar you know, player in him, the superstar potential, because we saw how he was in the playoffs. He's arguably an MVP of the playoffs. He was just, he played great. Mm -hmm. But I guess, like, they sometimes, they think that they can come back, like, as they did last year. Look back to the playoffs of the um, conference semifinals and how they were down in game five, down 15 in the third. They came back, won that game. Game six, down 19 in the third, came back and won that game. But you can't always do that. That's not going to happen. You've already proven that, yes, that you can't come back when down. Mm-hmm. But now you need to prove that you can start off strong, maintain a lead, and win. Exactly. And this is kind of – and look, at he he struggled in the first in the first game, the, their, their, their home opener. Mm-hmm. And, like, he struggled. And, like, you know – and don't forget, in the playoffs last season, he was talking about the fact of winning that respect. I was like, well, how do you expect people to give you that respect if you're starting off the game like that? Like, you know, great scorers do not do that. They're, if, when they're hot, they stay hot or they build up immediately in order to, like, you know, try to get some kind of success. You can't, you can't, just like what you said, you can't always do that. You can't always feel like you could start off a game in, in, a, in a regular, in a nonchalant form and finish all strong and your team is going to win. They need you hot from the start. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um. As for Jokic, he doing Jokic things. I mean, there's nothing really to say about that. He's still he's still Jokic, still being the man, still best center in the league, in my opinion. I'm still doing everything for the Nuggets. I need to see um Gary Harris though, because he wasn't a non-factor in that game. And I feel like he's a man that can create his own shot and um can really provide some good buckets for the Nuggets. And he needs to be good for them if they, you know take that next level of being a championship contender yeah and and that, and that goes for um michael porter jr too mm-hmm. yeah mike but mike jr was you know he didn't really have that many touches and he didn't really take that many shots this um this game so i'm not really you know criticizing him about that don't say that during the post game don't say that during the post game oh uh, but yeah but nonetheless 
a big, good revenge win for the Clippers. And also, I like to add that Serge Ibaka does look awfully nice in that system, by the way. Yeah, he does. He is a perfect – if he's a perfect fit for him, is is like – Again, with his talents, with his talents, with his ability to shoot the basketball, is good for him. Yep. And I just want to say one quick thing. Also, with with um, is also make Ty Lue look like a really good coach as we kind of know him to be in a way. He he looks because like, like you know people have questions about him with this Clippers team, and like he looks comfortable. That's a good observation because I still have questions about Ty Lue yeah. and seeing you know if he can lead Clippers team past you know. Yeah, to the conference finals, actually. Just lead them to the conference finals. But from the ugly sister to the big brother, as the Lakers played last night, <laughs> a highly anticipated matchup between the Lakers and the Mavericks, featuring, of course, Braun and Luka. That's what everybody wants to see. Yeah. Um, this was basically just a, a showcase of, you know, the Lakers being the Lakers. Just, just yeah. dominance. Um, the Lakers won this game as no surprise to anybody as the Mavericks are still lacking Porzingis. Luka yeah. can't do it all. And they need to find they need to find a supplement for just the players around him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, they rely heavily, heavily on Luka. Um, and when Porzingis is out, they, there needs to be another system in play. That's what I feel like. Yeah, because the system changes when you lose one of your star players. If if they if they moving like this with no Porzingis, just imagine if they had no Luca, then the offense would just be really stagnant. worst team in, worst team in the league. Yeah, worst team in the league. This offense would be really stagnant. Don't get me wrong; they got some really good hoopers who showed a lot in this game a little bit. Like you see, Burke. from Trey Burke, you Josh see Richardson, Josh Richardson. Like you know, yeah, they they had guys who who could try to create their own shot. You know what mm-hmm. I mean, and get and get into their flow, but it's just like at the same time, this team does not look as like as eye opening as what we saw last season, and of course they of course they went through some changes, but it's just like Luca, Luca, you see, and sometimes you see because Luca's be struggling to get to get his rhythm early on in the game in terms of his shot creation, or not shot creation, but making shots in a way. Yeah, it's just like you know, it's just like. They just need something. They need they need to operate around that, find a way to counter that in a way. But yeah, Lakers was just highly dominant, like you know, high octane, up and down, AD being AD, getting to his spot, mm-hmm. getting to his rhythm. LeBron having fun, you know, the biggest. Yeah. So that's not surprising. Montrez Harrell showing the high energy. It's just it's just it was just an all-around common Lakers. Yeah, I mean, like Le- LeBron, he kind of like he was kind of chill this game. You know, he sat back, didn't have to do much. He had 22, but he was really dishing out. He had 10 assists. And yeah. you see that it was really the Lakers supporting cast of Montrez Harrell, Dennis Shorter. They're two new pieces showing up big in this game. Anthony Davis doing what Anthony Davis is, one of the most skilled players that we've ever seen play. I mean, yeah. LeBron was so laid back that he aired the ball to free throw. So, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, this just shows you that the Lakers, when they're dominant, nobody can touch them. They're no match for anybody. When they're clicking on all cylinders, it's a scary sight. When LeBron is only scoring 22 and dishing out 10 assists each game, that's bad. That's bad for the league. Exactly. And um, just be careful for all the, like, you know, all the Braun haters. I mean, all the LeBron haters, like, they talk about Jordan will never airball a free throw. <laughs> Kobe will never airball a free throw. <laughs> Yeah, this is your goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, but a good win for the Lakers. And we see that the Mavericks need Porzingis back. Yeah, that's a fact. All right. Uh, we go to the top of the day. The first game of the last night, or I guess in the afternoon, was the Pelicans in the Heat. And this was a pretty good game, I guess, in the first half. And then the yeah. Heat kind of took over. Uh, Jimmy Butler had gotten had gotten hurt. I guess he went back home to open some Christmas presents. So <laughs> it wasn't that it was it, it was it's not that serious of an injury. So nobody has to worry about how Jimmy Butler is. He's Why do you have to say that though? What? Go home to open some Christmas presents. Uh, <laughs> um, um 
But I said the Heat maintain the Heat maintain the league. He maintained the lead, and they won 111-98. Let me get your thoughts on the Heat and Pelicans game. Yeah, oh. Well, this was a really this was a really good game. Um, like in the beginning, in the beginning, mm-hmm. um, both teams was exchanging baskets. Duncan Robinson, oh, running on Duncan, <laughs> <laughs> um, running on Duncan. Um, NBA record six threes and a half. Seven. He could have. Oh wait, no, it was six threes and a half. You're right. You're right. You're right. Six threes and a half. He could have. Wait, did he break the record for for um for most threes in the Christmas Day game? I think he tied it with Brandon Brandon Ingram from last year. Okay, but yeah, he just had he just had it going in that he. But like the thing is, they were just more exchanging baskets, really, in a way, in that beginning half. And then, even though Zion was cooking, Zion and Ingram was cooking in the third quarter, kind of <laughs> fell off in the fourth quarter. It was all Miami. It was all Miami from that point. It was nothing. Their whole their whole two way style of play was just flowing from both ends. The moment that third quarter hit, and they they and it looked like it was at a point where the Pelicans was about to come back, and then Miami just said no. This this ain't happening. Yeah. I mean, and I would like to focus on the Pelicans stars, Brandon Ingram and Zion, and you can see you can see what everybody else sees in these two, just mm-hmm. rising star potential. Possibly already star, like um you know superstar potential, like they was they was balling. Uh, the only problem was there was only two people balling there, <laughs> and they gonna need more for supporting cast of the, the Pelicans. Yeah. The Pelicans do have a good roster, so mm-hmm. they're gonna need to see how you know that roster can help them in the future. Yeah, and lead them to the playoffs. But yeah, you can see the superstar potential in Zion. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, I remember last year people were hating on him because of all the media attention that he got, and undeservedly sometimes, um, you know, sometimes because nobody was talking about John Morant, and he was the rookie of the year, and he was balling out. But you just watch Zion play. You see, he is made for this league. He's a su- He can be a superstar. He has He's tremendous impact. He, I always say this, like, he's one of those guys in which, like, you know, the moment that you you throw the ball up, it's just like you know his impact is immediately felt in a way. Like he could have like in the course of a game, he could really change the course of a game on his own by not even just scoring, by like but by different ways from like you know hustling, rebounding, like just doing things like that. He could really change the course of the game for real, for real. And he was doing his thing. He was he was being a bully. He was just being a straight up bully, and that's what and that and that's what you love to see again. For me and you, I think this is the first time we ever saw somebody that big who can do the things he do and move like that, with that kind yeah. of mass. So, yeah. That- no, you're right, and it's ridiculous. I mean, as he's just so strong and so athletic at the same time, mm-hmm. kind of like, kind of like Giannis a little bit, you know, like he's with more athleticism. We already know how. Athletic Giannis is. <laughs> so, so just imagine that in your mind. Like Zion is, he's gonna be a real, real problem yeah. when he kind of gets more developed into the league, mm-hmm. and also you know Brandon Ingram too. <laughs> of course, hell. Yeah. Um, he, he make free throws also. He just need make free throws. Who? Um, Zion. Zion, yeah. Yeah. A lot of free throws. I feel like if they keep Brandon Ingram and Zion together, they can go far. Yeah, he can really go far. All right. The last game we're talking about is the Bucks and Golden State Warriors. And I mean, what is there to talk about? Let's see. Middleton dominated. Giannis did his thing, even though he only had 15. Um, Drew Holiday made a much of contribution. It was, this was just more of a Bucks effort. And no disrespect to Golden State. They tried. We can say they tried. They just tried. That's it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get to go to stay in a minute. But yeah, Middle Middleton was out. He was ball. He was ball. He was balling. Yeah. You know, he was. He was. He was Merry Christmas to him. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, he was unwrapping Christmas gifts on the court. I mean, they couldn't stop him. <laughs> um, but let's let's talk about going to stay for a minute. Uh, this is the second straight game. They got blown out. And I know they went against two of the Eastern Conference elite in the Nets and the Bucks. Yeah. But 
<laughs> Warriors fans misclick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they miss a clay right now. The amount of pressure he takes off of the team and Curry means so much for mm-hmm. how their system is run. And you can see that it's hurting. Also, defensively, they miss Draymond. And leadership, they miss Draymond. They need him back quickly also. I just realized that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Oubre and Wiggins, they need to figure out how they can find themselves in the system. Steve Kerr needs to work with them to yeah. fit them in properly into the system. Um, but I do believe you give it some time, hopefully. You know, that's the right, Yeah, get it right. Um, some, a positive about Golden State is James Wiseman is really good. You, mm-hmm. see, you see the potential in him. He's really good defensively. He's a good um, kind of like cleanup player. You know, he can rebound. He can post up. And I see why he was picked second overall. Yeah. He's, uh, he's like a... Uh... Uh, like what I could say, like, you know, he's like a mixture of like a, what we look at as a big today and what a big in like a like a traditional big in a way. And with his abilities to impact on both ends of the floor. And he and look like it looked like he could stretch his game out more. So he has a lot of raw potential that we might see in future years, to be honest. Yep. Uh, but Curry, keep keep your head up. I know, <laughs> I know it must be hard right now because every time you get at half court, every, all the whole the whole team is watching. Because <laughs> everybody else, they're not playing up to par because, you know, the system has to be in play for them and you're the one who knows the system mainly. But I believe, I still have faith in the Warriors. I do think that they can make a push for the playoffs. You know, yeah. I still think they can be in that hunt. It's just going to, they need some time. Definitely going to need Draymond back. Yeah, I feel like it's more. Um, Kelly Uber needs more time adjusting. I feel like I I just feel like Wiggins is just out of it right now. I'm not gonna go to my rant about Wiggins right now. I'm I'm just gonna leave it at that. Wiggins is out of it, but um, nonetheless, a good win for the Bucks on Christmas Day, and we'll, we'll keep up on them and Giannis Middleton and Holiday in the upcoming games. All right. Uh, next predictions for tonight's games. We have a lot of games tonight, so let's go into a rapid fire, Ja. All right. Let's get it. Memphis and the Hawks. Hawks. I got the Hawks too. Hornets or the Thunder. Thunder. I got the Hornets. Pistons or the Cavs. Pistons. Pistons as well. Magic or the Wizards? Wizards. I got the Magic. I got to go surprise. Hey, they beat the Heat. <laughs> yeah, they gotta, did. You know, I got to go with some, some surprise picks, you know? Um, Knicks or the 76ers? The 76ers. No way. I got to go with the 76ers as well, sadly. But come on, RJ. I, I believe in you. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Yeah. Pacers or the Bulls? Wait, repeat that one more time. The Pacers or the Bulls? I'm going to choose the Bulls with this one. Okay. I'm going to choose the Pacers. The Spurs or the Raptors? The Rosen goes up against the former team. Spurs. I got the Raptors. Tim Wolves or the Jazz? That's be an interesting game. T Wolves for me. I was, I'm going with the Jazz. Rockets or the Blazers? Blazers. Rockets uh, have them going on right now. Yeah. I think James Harden might be stuck at a strip club, so I'm going go with the Blazers as well. <laughs> he going to be chilling with the little baby giving a honey bun. <laughs> Yo, he's real quick. So Adam Silver kind of gave him a slap on the wrist before. <laughs> he was like, like, like kind of like he was talking to his kid. He's like, so, okay, okay, James, you made this mistake now. So I'm gonna give you a warning now. <laughs> but you mess up again, and it's gonna be a real problem, James. Okay. <laughs> nah, 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 they was really treating him like that. Well, I did. <laughs> they was really treating him like that, yo. Uh, I thought it'd be more severe if the game didn't get postponed, though, too. Yeah. 
That's crazy. Eight. Um, and the last game, Suns and the, or the Kings. Suns, but I think this one's going to be a close game, though. Yeah, me, me, me as well. But I also agree with you. I got the Suns. All right, I think it's time to wrap things up now. Any final thoughts on tonight's games or Christmas Day games or players and teams or whatever? Please, no more blowouts in Christmas Day. <laughs> I I nearly dropped dead to sleep, bro. I was like, "Yo, what the hell, bro?" Yeah, it was it was pretty bad as a fan watching it. Uh, some interesting parts because you know we're basketball fans, but it's like it's like they started off so well just to get blown out by a thousand. Yeah, I mean, but there was some interesting parts, you know, like LeBron airball. But nonetheless, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that if LeBron hated, um, LeBron fans are watching just to get them upset. <laughs> Dodo will never airball. He he shot a free throw with his eyes closed and he made it. <laughs> yeah, if LeBron shot a free throw with his eyes closed and would hit somebody over the head. <laughs> <laughs> I love jokes about LeBron and his great. <laughs> we all know we both know LeBron is great. We just joke, yeah. but nonetheless, um, I right, that does it. That do it. Um, uh, thank you guys for watching today's pod. Make sure you tune into tomorrow's podcast. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And once again, I am Evan, and I'm Ja, and this was the Mind of Basketball podcast. <laughs>